Oh. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we got Young L on the podcast. And I'm very excited about this because I also brought along my buddy Lil House Phone, who grew up in the jerking area. He was like a 13 year old when the pack started coming out and everything. He was probably rocking Pink Dolphin at that time, too. So, not, not, not yet. Not yet. I came later. All right, but we're going to find out today how all this happened. So let's, Young L, okay, first off, where are you from? I'm from Willow Park, Berkeley, California. Okay, and so talk to us about your early days getting into music and how all that led into you being one of the founding members of the pack. Man, it's, it's like, it, it damn near goes back to like high school, you know? Um, like I went to Albany High, that's how I met. That's that's like the first time I met B. It was like just at high school. He, we was just chilling. He would always be coming like, "Yo, I got dro, bro." Like, bro, I'm plugged in with the trody, bro. You you need any weed? I got you on the plug out here in Albany High. And then I'll be asking other people around the school like, "Hey, B, does B have dro?" He was like 15. And like, you were a dro head at the time? Not even. I was just asking because he was always be telling me that. Uh-huh. This before I knew him. Like before we had even our first conversation. And then um, he was like, "Yo, like." A couple people around school was like, nah, he just be woofing. Like, he don't even be having trouble. And I was like, well, let me just talk to Brett. So I, I, we was just chopping up. He's like, man, I'm from West Berkeley, man. For real, I'm from the front. You know, and I, and I, you know, being from Berkeley, you know where that's at. That's like by the water, you know, if you see, if you know where the waterfront is or whatever. That's different. That's like West Berkeley. So, uh, uh, sorry. Yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, B being from West Berkeley, just, I met him at, at Albany. Um, and uh, I was, I initially, like, he was rapping before I was even thinking about really even getting serious with production. And what age are we talking? What grade here? Uh, I think B was, like, a, a freshman or a sophomore. Uh-huh. And I was, like, a, a junior. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it just branched off, like, really sh- just from initially from me also knowing Keith Stunnerman, mm-hmm. just from knowing him skateboarding before I even – before I even went to Albany High, because I'm, I'm originally from Berkeley, so I was going to Berkeley High and Berkeley schools before that. So you guys were all skateboarding and shit? Not even. It was really me and Keith. Like, me and Keith, was we was the skateboard homies. Like, we had our own clique called Heavy Hitters, like, just before, and we would just do hella bad shit. Like, we would go to the uh, Ashby Flea Market, get knives, and just mm-hmm. go to the skate park and then cut cut people's tires by the hot wallet <laughs> factory and shit. Like, you, you just cut I mean? random people's tires? You yeah, were bad we were kids on bad. that level? Like, Wait, we was, hella it, bad. was it like some like skater versus BMX shit at the it park? It was like that lightweight, like, because we was like, y'all fucking up our ledges, bro. Like, straight up. <laughs> wow, it's like, no really joke. come full we circle. We wax on it, like, we getting it buttered up for y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all just come tearing a pier down. Like, the Pier 7 blocks was just tore up from bikers. So, I mean, it was cool. Like, I mean, for now, I respect bikers, you know. So. Yeah, man, that was some <laughs> real, like, cult tribal rivalries at that time, though. Yeah, I yeah. remember well. Yeah, so so back in the day, we would have we we because I skated too, so we would have mm-hmm. ran up on this nigga and cut no, his no. tires. You feel me? No, nah, you would have <laughs> cut the fade. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow up out here, but if I did, I assume I would have had a Draco from a very young age. Oh man! Yeah. Or you or you could have been a square. And I'm glad you're from New Hampshire. Well, there's a very very strong mm-hmm. chance that that would have been the case too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you guys were all just sort of like skateboarding and hanging out and stuff? So yeah, yeah. So it was like I'm gonna tell you how the music started. Cause I know you had asked that. No, but wait, did, did you feel like when you met Little B or Stunna Man? Like, was there a feeling that you had that like, oh, this is like these guys are actually really talented? Like, what, like did it seem yeah. early from the beginning? <laughs> like, oh, we're we're gonna do something? <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, you were just nah. regular ass kids, just we sort were of clicking just up, around. Okay. And, but we always wanted to be our own bosses. That was the thing about us. So like, I had this fake record label that I made. I didn't even have an LLC or nothing. I, my mom was like, "Yeah, just you can mail something to yourself and you can copyright it." What was it called? It was called Boss Man Records. Okay. This was like when I was like probably like junior year high school. So I had signed, um, I had signed like a a few different acts from my high school or whatever, and Lil B and. Uh, Lil B and Stunner Man were like two of the acts that I had signed. And then it was just that we just kind of felt that everybody wasn't really taking it seriously. You know, we kind of felt like like people weren't taking the record label seriously. We had diss tracks going around in high school. People talking shit like, about you guys. Hella shit. Yeah, it was a really? lot of shit going on. So we just felt like, I mean, I just felt like people weren't really taking the music in serious. We were already, you know, uh, trading sneakers and shit. You know I mean? Were you guys already sort of like on the wavelength that the pack would then become known for? Like the vans, the skateboarding, the sort of like weirder outsider style, like which was, it, it's hard for people to even remember that rap was very different at that time. I mean, like Berkeley is so diverse, bro. Like mm-hmm. keep it real. Like Berkeley, if you've ever been there, I mean, a lot of people mm-hmm. who go there, they know how diverse it is. Like I grew up, my friend circle was like, I had Indian partner. I had a, a 
you know, African partners. I had some Chinese partners. Uh, you know, I had I was friends with everybody. So just you know, just that's how we grew up. So we was just always had was like I feel like Berkeley is just a, like a medley of cultures. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's weird too because it's like a lot of the stuff that goes on in the Bay doesn't necessarily leave the bay. There's a lot of slang, yeah, there's a lot nice. of style, there's a lot of musical trends yeah, that are yeah. crazy there. So a lot of times when you hear music from the bay, to somebody, if you only ever listen to New York hip hop or LA shit, you wouldn't even and, know how to and you hear some shit from the bay, you'd be like, what the fuck? They're on a totally different wavelength. Yeah, yeah but, it's like, cause I feel like when you get to the bay, it, you know, you're seeing it, people are just drawn to that shit. So some people, all they can leave with is just to take the slang or to take the wave from us or to like, you know, kind of like low key, uh, you know, just, but I feel like we do get admired for a lot of good shit. And I think what it comes from is really just not really having no option, not really having no hope, bro. Mm -hmm. Like on the real, like a lot of what people that I know from way back, like they smokers, you feel me? Like mm -hmm. niggas just be smokers. They be, I'll be asking some of my homies like, what happened to bro? Oh, he, he just, he just came back from doing nine. Like, Sh you know, first of all, not even like that, but just, I have some partners that did time. You know what I mean? My brother, you know, uh, Antonio, um, free OT, you know what I mean? He's, he, he doing like, you know, some time right now, some, some prison time. So it's just, just being surrounded by people. Like when you see people catching cases, you like, damn, like it's hot. Like, bro, you hot doing that. Like it's hot. Don't go there. Like, don't do that. Stay out of this area. Stay out of that area. It's like, we just, all we do is just rap about this shit now. But did you grow up around a lot of bad shit or was it sort of later in your life that you it got like, introduced to all the gang shit and all the crazy shit out there? It's not even no gang shit because they don't even be on that in, in uh, the it's Bay. Really gangs. Like, okay. Yeah. It'd it be more or less like, like. I lived in like what if you go to my my city right now back to my block you'll be like this is this is pretty nice because they didn't mark the houses up they didn't mark everything up you know uh -huh. since since we was little but I mean even me like I was I was come from middle class like you know what I mean really um, but I was always just like my had my family was so tied in with everything I got African family all through the Oakland and like just everybody just knows what the pack is doing and everybody knows where I'm from so you know. It was really like I think coming up, just the real the real thing that brought brings the bay like and sets a difference for the bay as far as the tone goes. It's just really like I think uh, just being around that and be feeling like you can't get out, bro. Yeah. Like feeling like you just can't get out and ain't nobody gonna take you serious. That's why a lot of people from the bay come to L.A. because they want yeah. people to take. And I said it feels like an island. It's like it feels like that not just in the way that the styles develop, but also a, probably a lot of that comes from people feeling like there's not a lot of opportunities for young people there, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you, you can get a nine to five, but, like, then you'd be thinking, like, damn, like, I'm spending all my time here. Mm. Like, I can't do shit. And you'd be having, like, your parents be like, move out the house, yeah. nigga. Like, <laughs> so it'd be like, you know, you just have to get it going hella, hella fast. And I just got lucky the fact that I clicked up with all my niggas real quick. And we started just we started just moving mean real fast and pushing the hard line for our music. And that's that's what really set us apart. And you know, that's me, B, Stunna, and Uno. So that was what really brought you guys all together was the actual music? What was yeah. what were the early days of you guys making music together like? Like we would all like Stunna Man was sometimes we all be from different we were all in different parts of Berkeley basically at the time. Like Uno's in South Berkeley, Stunna's like a little few blocks down the street, you know, uh Beast like staying in a different area. So it's like we all had to figure out ways for us to get home and get to my house to record and get them back home. You know what I mean? Because we mm -hmm. didn't have cars and shit. So I was like the first nigga with L. So we was taking my mom's minivan. After we went to the studio, we'd go to the parties and shit, the functions, play our shit. You know, go on. If we was going to the mall or something, we would bring hella CDs, sell them. It's so. still that era. This is yeah. kind of like, what, well, what year are we talking? Because it's like pre-internet, but it's also sort of like early internet. Where it's like your songs were on MySpace, but it's not like people were only consuming yeah. music online like they are now. That's real. I mean, it was like kind of like we had a mixture because we also had a major deal at the time. So like we, a lot of people don't know that. With Too Short, right? Too, well, that wasn't even, it was through Too Short, but the major deal was with Jive. Okay. And well, so, but how long did you guys have to be making music together before that became a, a thing? Yeah, we came out with Wolfpack Music Volume 1, 2, and three before they came that was knocking. three different big tastes all produced by me before they even came knocking at the door for shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yo, were you were you doing the were, were you and B doing the the SS mixtapes uh, before Wolfpack Music came out, or that was like I was like probably I think SS got popped like probably around the time I did MOSS, which yeah. was like probably around the time I came out with my first my really my first solo mixtape. Mm. 
album, damn near bass sensation, Cuddy, Cuddy Row bass sensation, which was super old school. So that was like around the time SS was popping. I think that was damn near. What year was that, Scott? You know? I think, um, I want to say it's like, 2007 or two. yeah 2007 or something like so that. how hot were you guys off those first original three mixtapes by the time you got signed were you guys actually popping or was it more like they saw the potential it just it was too short it was pushing a hard line but we were getting offers from a lot of different people like it was like different record labels coming to us from different angles but we wanted to roll it short it was real like that's unk like that was yeah. the dude who brought us in, into the game like gave us these opportunities showed us that we could actually Get out of the hood and get what was out it like when you met him? I mean, he can't, it was weird because he it wasn't it wasn't weird. It was like what well, basically the way he heard about us was that motherfuckers was playing our music and they were saying they were us. You feel me? But they weren't us. Oh. And they were showing this music to Shore and they was like they was like bro, like you gotta check us out. We the pack come sign us or whatever. <sighs> That's crazy. That's a weird finesse. How yeah, far can that get was you? To yeah, us. What happens? <laughs> like what? They was trying to finesse us for the bag. You know what I mean? But. <sighs> Anyways, he, he found like, y'all though. Yeah, you know? he came out and found us because like he he weirdly like knew like one of Uno's relatives and got in touch with Uno, and then he came to my crib. I was going to Albany High at the time, so it was Brandon and uh, we were all at the house. I think I don't think. Uh, and then he just got on a song with us the first day he came over in my really? mom's in my mom's house. Like yeah, I was staying in my was it was it mom's booty? house. I, I got in the closet and made a song with Short. So that was, was it, that was his energy from the beginning, though, is that he was he was down to just rap. He was down to get on a song with you guys, just, no yeah. business relationship? Yeah, we didn't even have no, nothing to write, and he was like, y'all make a song, which it was called, uh, I think it was called Back At It. It was really old. Like, I don't think you'll even find it on mm-hmm. no, really? no, no, no internet stuff. But this right. is, like, way before, like, Booty Bounce Bopper and shit like that. Yeah, we actually have a video for Booty Bounce Bopper. We have some funny-ass videos that if you look on YouTube, you can find a lot of funny-ass videos, bro. What was making videos like at that time? Were you guys making videos and putting them on MySpace and shit? Yeah, no, nah, it was like right when the green screen got popping. So we were doing <sighs> shit with like the same dude was doing shit with Soldier Boy. His name was Rage. He did the In My Car video for us, which is like completely green screen. So it was like when green screen first got popping. So the graphics were like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like they were like not like, I would say like the graphics were like almost like, they were like not even 3D. Right. They were like fake 3D. So it was like weird, but it was clean though. Yeah, it was super cl- vintage. So, so you decide to sign with Too Short, and then this this is before uh, Vans is out. No, like y'all, y'all got signed after Vans. People who aren't yeah, watching, he's had, taking no, extremely honestly, long I'll hits of weed. I'll load it, but look, <laughs> see the Vans song. I feel like we did though, because Too Short was helping us push that. Like he was taking us out to his shows, and letting us do that song, over it up for him. It's oh, so you crazy. had that song before you signed with him? They there at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Like and so, what, can weeks. we tell you about the creation of that song? Because listening yeah. to it now, it's almost like yeah, hard so. to imagine that this was in an era before like product placement sort of took over hip hop. Like, if you guys had been a huge act and came out with that song, people would have been definitely like, "Oh, they got paid to do that." It's actually the fact that you're it's so in your face about telling you how great Vans are that it's almost you have to believe that it was. We, I'm gonna tell you what, thing, bro. We got in trouble for making that song. Really. Yeah. We got like at first like, like, yeah, like we when we got on MTV the we were only on MTV for like yeah I mean like four it had to be like four months like maybe like two or three months before they were like this is a Vans commercial you got to take this shit off off the airwaves right is that so is they that, were like we can't even push y'all music I was like what the fuck bro was it wasn't Are it you like serious? a couple wasn't it like a couple versions where like the Vans word was bleeped out yeah they yeah. were doing fake shit like that to us just trying to play us out of it and like Vans was also trying to play us out of a bag at the same time what Vans were supposed Vans, to give you like, money at some point we were supposed to do a collab we have like twenty pairs total. But like they never did the collab. Really? It oh, the, hard. They're the, like they were basically. Saying, I mean, we got the word that like threw the like jive and shit that like we were too urban for them to fuck with us. Really? Oh, yeah. at that time, yeah, because Vans at that time would have been way less but, but cool know, than they are now. You know what's now. crazy though? You know what's crazy though? The odd niggas like like it's funny how like the business people are looking at that, looking at it like you guys are too urban. But if it wasn't for you guys, like it's a lot of consumers that would have not like. Even if they did fuck with Vans, they would have not yeah. like felt comfortable if you guys didn't come out with that song. You feel I me? feel like they just used it for the wave, and at the same time, I should have just invested in the stock market at that time. Man. I feel like that's it. 
Tell me, tell me, like, if I'm totally wrong here, but I don't remember ever hearing a black motherfucker in a rap song talk about Vans ever. (laughs) Y'all made it cool for niggas like me to go to school with Vans and a skateboard and, like, baggy red monkey jeans and still be, like, lit. You feel me? Because we didn't get fucked with at the parks. Nobody was fucking with us because we was deep. We would go up there deep. Like, we, we made videos. Like, we had videos that were being sold out of stores and shit, like, skate videos of us. Yeah. And I was like, we was we would skate with Colin Tilly. He directs videos for like I don't know if y'all. Damn, Colin, Colin Tilly you know, skates, Colin, right? Like, yeah, yeah. He, he shot he shot Moss for me, like one of my first videos that I got on World Star. So it was, it was like one of his videos. You know what I mean? I was like the first time I think he had got on World Star or some shit. Damn, really? Mm-hmm. So it was Bro, like he, he yeah, makes like big. everybody's like yeah. Like he just made, made mask off for Future. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's he, been bugging me to get the video to him that we, the skate video we have, but we have like an old skate video he wants to release supposedly. That would have been crazy. Out. I don't want to put Colin under no pressure. No. <laughs> like a <laughs> like a happen. like a skate like team video like, a, like yeah a, like a skate team. We was a, we had a skate team called Casino and we would just shred shit. Like yeah. We would be shredding. I thought I was a super fan. I don't even know about that. That's, that's <laughs> no, I, I just had the DVD at the crib. I forgot to bring it. I'm having Yo, you got to burn that shit and yeah, send it to you. It. And there's no CD drives in anything now. I had to get like one of those like external CD burners. Right. And shit. You were making all the beats the whole time? Yeah. That you just stuck with it? Was that like the vision? Was I like doing it because I felt like I, felt, well, I, I can't even stop really. Like, I can't even stop that shit. Like I'll stop making beats i'll start tweaking and shit really even to this day yeah yeah like i can't stop making beats but like at the time when i was doing the pack shit it was i was always around these niggas so i was like fuck it we all partners let's get it in yeah and was it like at that time like as you guys were putting out those tapes and like as you were getting signed and stuff were you guys just like a real deal brotherhood or were you guys fighting and like i guess fighting is part of being fights i mean yeah like you know it was some times when like yeah you know, so you weren't really likely to be the one actually getting in a fight. I've never gotten into a fight legit with anybody in the pack. I mean, I think Stunner got really mad at me a couple of times, and I, and one time I kicked Uno. I, I kicked a drink out of Uno's hand hella fast. Wow, what, like, like a was, high kick yeah, or like, something? No, I was like Spinning a back kick. kick. Was like a oh. kick. I took hella martial arts when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I used to break boards and shit. <laughs> hey, this is kind of a, a little bit of a throwback to the, the earlier conversation, but w- when you first met B, was there, was now when you look at it, were there signs that he was going to be sort of like the level of influence yeah. that he has been? Yes. You could tell early on. B is a, is a, is a people person. Okay. You know what I mean? If you ever met B, you know this. You know that he's a people person if you ever met B. So like B like his like his natural aura, people will gravitate towards him. Like he's popular. Like mm-hmm. he was popular in high school just for her, for her being himself. Like and he just Just he, like that sort of friendly, yeah, people charming are just drawn, vibe. Drawn towards him. Period. Like it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. This is what happens. If he steps in the room, people are always like, who is it was dude like especially once we we started trying all different fashion shit like he was wearing the skinny he started, jeans yeah. and doing the van shit like you know everybody was really fucking with it were you guys conscious of the fact that you were innovative and and on the cutting edge of like what young people were wearing at that time were you like consciously wearing weird different shit because that was a big part of what the pack became known for i mean obviously the vans thing is a big part of it but just in general too i mean i think it was like Honestly, like it was like a few groups out of the bay that had that style. Mm. Like it wasn't just us. I gotta give credit to some, some other artists and some other groups. Like it was like Jay Anthony and like the Diligence who came out with some music. It was also uh, you know, uh Go Dave. They came out Shout with some out music. Go Dave. So it was like a few different groups that had like just had that same energy and that vibe. So it was like we just fed into the whole style, and we was the we was the ones was the one that pioneered it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So we was just the ones that I know I can never say like we got our sound or style from anybody. Yeah. People most of the time got it from us, but I can just say that like when we was coming up, we we it wasn't just us. It was it was a, mother, a group a group of motherfuckers in the bay. It was a whole movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but y'all y- y'all were like helping like shine light on the artist that wasn't on that level as y'all That's too true. You feel me? we've always been doing that too like like like, like, like those names that you just said if i if i didn't know about y'all i would have not found out about like the diligence or go dave or even fucking tyga you feel me like a lot of niggas don't yeah. even like remember that shit you feel me yeah ty was on tour with us for a minute you know i remember when ty first met wayne you know i could recall those moments you know what, I mean? what was that like i mean when ty first met wayne we were at uh if i'm not if i'm not incorrect we were at a, uh one of the mtv award shows and he was doing a show with wayne and i had met wayne the same night that tiger met wayne i guess and in person at least but um from what i don't remember 
but it was just he just flooded Wayne with a grip of music. Mm -hmm. Was like, this? It was like he just never stopped sending music to Wayne. <laughs> like he never stopped, and then he got chain. I was like, this nigga got a young money chain. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Wait, was so like, was this fuck? before? Uh, uh, put the lime in the coconut and drink it Yeah, this it was up. before that. Yeah, like, that was the first big single for yeah, him, right? That was his first big single, but he was underground for a minute out here in L.A. Yo, I got a fucking question that I feel like nobody else can answer this except for y'all niggas. What the fuck happened to Gator? Because it was Tiger Yo, and Gator. I don't even really know. That's not even my business. Yeah, shit, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's not, like, that's on some... That's low key on yeah. some street shit, you know yeah. what I mean? That's oh, for not, real? I can't even touch down. Wait, are you guys talking about the video that's like... Stunna Man beat up, be, but there's a video that's like Stunna Man beat up Tiger's old hype man, and it shows him going know. into somebody's house and beating the fuck out of some dude. And I don't know if that's who you're talking about. I think that's who. It's talking <laughs> about. I gotta go see that video. I didn't know that. Existed. It's intense. It's like there's something that's, special about going into somebody's house and beating them up in the house. That's who I can't yeah. even. Speak. I mean, you know, me and Gator, we still, you know, we, he still hits me now and then. I don't have no relate, you know, no, I don't have no alliances, you dig yeah, what I'm saying? Talk, but, yeah. you know, it's just that I feel, you know, shit, shit is what it is. You so, sounds pretty serious. You don't want to talk yeah. about it. Um, all right. So, but that era, you know, it really stands out to me that I think hip hop in general was just primed and ready for something different and weird and new because I, I think you guys were really yeah. kind of like a, a year or two before it, but then you had like Odd Future, White uh -huh. Girl Mob, yeah. ASAP Mob, just yes. so many like weird groups of real young kids that weren't yeah. doing anything that was really similar to what had been happening before that. Because yeah. before all that, it was much more like if you wanted to be a rapper, you needed to be a goddamn crack dealer. Yeah, you had to fit certain criteria. Because you were still coming off the G-Unit Dipset era yeah. in which everybody was a superhero. Yep. And you were starting so, to have, you know, Kid Cudi and dudes who were changing things a little bit. But for young people in particular, I feel like you guys really were indicative of a big change in hip-hop as a whole, I guess you could say. Oh, for real. It was like the whole the whole culture. Like I said, like, if it wasn't for these niggas, like, it wouldn't even have been, like, I was wearing Vans before that and getting clowned. And then once that <laughs> song like, got popping, it was like... Oh, you cool now, you feel me? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's like, when you talk about the pack, you gotta mention everybody. It's like, cause too, like, even, I mean, this is, shit, this is my interview, you feel me? But shit, B, I mean, you know, it, that nigga did so much for everybody. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That nigga did a lot for a lot of people that don't give him credit either. So it's like, you know, even him, like, taking the angle of like, you know, when he when he made that, that move to be like, look, I'm the bass guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm here on the internet. You can't, you can't avoid you can't avoid me, you know what I mean? I'm doing dances. I got bitches twerking. I got a twerk team. I got, you know, I'm, I'm got diamonds. I'm him. Like, I'm him, period. Like, that's what that's what B was thinking. He's like, yo, I'm him. And then he convinced everybody he was that nigga. And he is that nigga, bro. And that's how it went. And that's how it still is. So it's just crazy to see that shit. And even talking to him, like, he'd be in the coffee shops, you know what I mean? In the coffee shops in Berkeley still just, you know, reading books and shit, but it's amazing just to see how, how far he came, you know. He was hitting licks and bringing computers to school, you know what I mean, selling computers at school after he just robbed a house and shit, you know what I mean, like, shit was many, like, you know what I mean. You ever on that? I never kicked it, though. I never <laughs> on no kick those. Yeah. That's, no, that's good. It's probably good. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's a fucking slippery slope to get down. Chapo said a new song, he said, I, I ain't been the same since I hit my first safe. And I was like, damn, I wish I hit a safe so I could relate to that a little bit better yeah you wish that until you <laughs> until you get caught doing that shit or one of your homies get i guess caught. you're right bro that shit yeah, that's just not the wave though hey but <laughs> but like, can i ask you something though just because like just from like me being <laughs> such like an avid fucking like follower like of y'all niggas like yeah it felt like the eyes were like on you a lot when you guys were like like blowing like when you guys were blowing up and shit just because, like, I don't know, you made the beats, like, yeah. you often, like, at the t like, at, you often at the time had like the best verses on a lot I of the songs. That, you man. feel me? Like, that's just that's just some real shit. Man, I appreciate that. Like, you know, I just try to keep it doing what I do. Like, I try to stay as consistent as possible, regardless if, like, you know, a lot of shit happened to my social media accounts. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, it was some fuck shit going on with my last Instagram. So my last Instagram, boom, I got deleted at like 27, 30k. You yeah. feel me? You get hacked or something? Yeah, I got hacked and they switched the emails. So <sighs> some fuck shit. I could, the worst. You know, it was weak as fuck because I was like loaded. I was trying to get it done. I couldn't even get it back. It was it was toast. Yeah. So it was that, and then it was like um. My YouTube that I had when I was signed to these fools called uh, Indie Pop Records or whatever, 
I was signed to them, and then basically when I left their record label, my YouTube somehow, like I guess something ha- happened to my YouTube, so I lost a, my, a really big YouTube account that I had. Yeah, yeah, really? So it was like just two things that I had to just deal with as an artist like and not let my quality of music change throughout, you know what I mean? Right. So that well, That's too. much later on too, though, right? Yeah, but that was like recent, like fairly oh, recent. Yeah, I'm about to say, because like, even before like Instagram age and all that shit, like you guys always had like a huge like social media fucking presence, you feel me? Like, kind of what um, you were known for early on, right? Yeah. yeah, like mostly MySpace though. Really though, it was it was like MySpace, bro. Like we had we was on Cassie's top five, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we knew Cassie. <laughs> God, damn, really? You feel me? We went to the same studio that that Pac got hit at. I remember we went to one of the studios Pac got shot at, and we was in New York. I mean, we we was like a lot of our people who know us wasn't even from internet, bro. It was from our tours, cause like that's yeah. how Pink Dolphin got popping. Like when I was on tour, you know, releasing the Pink Dolphin on, you know, doing the merch. For the Pink Dolphin, I basically was releasing this merch before it was even a line. So yeah. it was like that was that the, was the music too. You feel me? It was just going on tour. We went on tour with Gym Class. We went on tour with Fall Out Boy. We went on tour with um, you know, uh, Bone Thug. So it was it was uh, dope. You know, that's how a lot of our music got heard too. So we really songs. got we got to talk about like the song, the 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 Van song blowing the fuck up and what that was like because I'm I'm assuming you guys were at one. You know, you guys were like popping locally. And then I, th- I feel like that happened, and then it just became like a, a wave, right? I mean, like it was kind of like we were popping, but like we were fighting the whole time to get popping, bro. Like right. when you're for the Bay, it's like people, don't, it's different. You gotta like you gotta fight for your for your you know for to get popping. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like so, I just felt like we we were trying hella hard. It, you know what I mean? So it was like the record label didn't really know what to do with us the whole time, bro. Like right. they, we got worried from a lot of people, like. You know, this record label don't really know what they doing with y'all, bro. Like, y'all need to figure out what's going on. And you guys were like, so new at the time. We were hella young, too, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, it it was, like, to the point where I heard, like, Short sat me down the other day. I was talking with Unc. He was, like, I was talking to him. I was, like, bro, so, you know, it was some funny-ass stories. But, like, what really happened with the label? Like, you know what I mean? I'll be asking him, like, what really happened with the label? Like, why wasn't Jive, like, really pushing us? Like, why do we only go on West Coast tours? Mm. Why do we only get sent to West Coast radio stations? Why do we only get X amount of merch or X amount of sen- singles sent out or have to do X amount of drops? So, really, like, I heard from Short, he was like, you know, honestly, bro, it was funny. We had, we had like, we was just wild. We was just too wild, bro. Like, I remember Stunna, Unk said, Too Short said this, that basically what happened was, and one of these incidents with the with the um you know just just really with just 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 you know A and R's and stuff like that we didn't really mix in with them too well basically so it mm-hmm. was just incidents that we would get into with them sometimes. And that's kind of how it is in the music industry is that if you're yeah, sort of hard yeah. to deal with that people are not always likely to give you a second chance because yeah. they're kind of looking out for their own comfort and it's like oh if I don't and feel like dealing with this too. kid fuck it I'm just gonna not fuck with them you know. Yeah, if they feel like it's a liability, they might be like you know it's for y'all, you know. I don't know. <laughs> so, so you guys were like, you know, bubbling to a certain extent, but then what? The Van song comes out, and like, do you remember when you actually realized, like, oh, this song is, it's not just a regular little local jam. It's like this is actually going real viral, even though I know you didn't know the word viral at the time, yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, we was kind of too young. I think we was kind of blinded by fame at the time. Like we was doing so many shows that we didn't really see the the real growth. Really, we were doing so many shows. We was out making money, like so. You were touring money. before the song actually really started to blow up. You guys were actually already out there and shit. And at the time, like I think really after Van started popping, we got on a little promo tour to promote the EP we were we were pushing or whatever. So once we came out with, with really that that uh, that tape, I think it was really on and on and popping what, from there as far as what the shows, tape bro. what we tape like was the Van song three on? tours. Uh, Vans was on skateboards and scrapers. Yeah, yeah. EP. And, uh, that wasn't that it, wasn't an it album. It came out as a single as itself too. It was for uh, a skateboards and scrapers was a. Um, it was, was an EP. It was an album. It was for sale though, right? Though? Yeah, it was for sale. Yeah, we was in all the stores and internet stores and everything. So, so like, how how big did that song get from your perspective? Like, oh, it was we, on the radio. I mean, it's for and, show. It's for show. Uh, at least almost at gold right now. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I got work from my manager. It was almost at gold right now. So that's crazy. Yeah. I could just imagine Nike like advertising on MTV and being like, "Why the fuck are we advertising on here if you guys are just doing a fucking promo for Vans every couple hours?" It's real political. Man. <laughs> yeah, we'll exactly. Get, get in there, man. Yeah. It, that's the same reason when you watch videos now, motherfuckers got the, the chance at his Louis belt fucking blurred out. Yeah, I thought it was a Gucci belt, and then they, they told me it was a Louis belt. Sued, yeah. They then sued Rose for having them Louis glasses too customized. Oh yeah, they on the cover of Double XL. Yeah, they'll yeah. sue you for customizing shit, bro. Fucking Tyler had to like stop wearing supreme so much because like 
it, we were just giving our free promo, like mm. rapping about the shit and like wearing it and like all them like once you have that strong of an influence, like I said, like you guys made it cool to be from the hood and wear vans. Like Tyler made it cool to like wear Supreme and like not even be a skateboarder really. And like it gets to a point to where like your influence is so strong and like you just giving niggas free promo. And like you said, like like your fucking y'all collab didn't even come out. You feel me? Bad. Yeah, it'd be like that. Like, I don't know, I think, like, you know, we just, even with the Pink Dolphin shit, I just try to set the marker, like, you really got to have people believing in your lifestyle to yeah. do anything successful as an entrepreneur. If people don't believe in your lifestyle, they don't believe in your brand, they don't believe in nothing you push in, period. Yeah. Like, if you go on Instagram, you see, like, some people have hella followers, don't get no likes, you'd be wondering why, because maybe their followers are real, maybe they're not, but whatever it is, like nobody will care because they don't care about their lifestyle. Mm. It's and not I, making a connection. And at the same time, it's not for everybody. And people are just scared to be honest. And that's why a lot of people don't be successful. I think. No, no, that's real shit. Cause like even like with like the whole ground roots of of Pink Dolphin. Yeah. Like even the original logo was just like the fat kind of like almost like a like an ambulance cross almost. You feel me? It was like like the fat cross with the with like the like this right here. Yeah. It, is that like oh, Arabic like, letters? Like what kind nah, of? Nah, that's some Japanese letters right there. And yeah. like, th like the original logos was just that. Y'all had them on like yeah, real we, bright, like you know, like, uh, like turquoise like shirts and like pink shirts. And I remember Lil B wearing the tiny shirts with that logo on it. I didn't know what the fuck that shit said. I, that's the whole me? point I was going for. I was going like people don't have to know what it means or what it is. They just gonna go towards it because of the lifestyle behind yeah. it. You feel what I'm saying? So we had, I had even Travis McCoy, I think might have thrown my t-shirt on at one time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and that was before, yeah, dope. that was before you was even using like an actual dolphin, like who put a logo, you feel me? Like honest, to be honest, like that was never even my vision to use an actual dolphin. That was Cena's vision, mm -hmm. uh, my my, uh, my old partner, but you know what I mean? So how, wait, but how did, Pink Dolphin start in the beginning. Was this yeah. just sort of like a little, you said it was like merch more than an actual yeah. clothing line early Man, on, right? It was merch. It was like, well, the thing was, I had a, a, a friend named Elliot at the time who uh, had a printing shop and he had a, a company called Ultra Vitalance at the time. And he, and now he's doing shit for Justin Bieber and shit. But at the time he was, he was, he was in the city in uh, San Francisco and, and he designed one of my main, major logos that ended up basically being on the back of every Pink Dolphin t-shirt and mm -hmm. like everywhere for Pink Dolphin, which was the promo logo with the plus sign in the Japanese. So me me and B knew him already because he was giving us Ultra Vitalance gear. Mm -hmm. So after he made the logo, I was like, yo, B, let's put this together. Let's let's do this as like kind of like a rock band. It'll be like a rock band, you know what I mean? But we're going to have clothes. And, but at first we was going to really call it, a, it was really going to be a rock band called Pink Dolphin. But it was just me and B. We made like one song. A rock song? Yeah. You like played rock. instruments? It was like emo, you know what okay. I mean? Damn. Legit emo, like you know what I mean? But for real. With actual instruments, or how'd you yeah. get the? Yeah, my mom played the guitar, and I did the <sighs> uh, I did the beat. It's actually on, um, it's actually on, it's on iTunes right now. It's uh, I think it's on SS Mixtape Volume One called Never Meant That Much or something. It's called I think Never I'm gonna have to go that give much. that a listen because yeah, I want to hear your mom like play guitar and I want to hear a little B make an emo song. It's dope. It was hella, it was hella yeah. songs on the, on those mixtapes. Like, you could argue that all little B songs are emo songs. You can, but yeah, well, they're all message. emotional. I got a message, man. Okay, so it's, it's you, a real. It's you know what I just message. noticed by sitting here right now? Like a lot of the names that you like didn't say like O T, even your like Elliot or whatever. Like Elliot. last time you just said, yeah. and even like your brother. Those are like names that you've like said during songs, and like yeah. I'm just like put it together right now. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, like you really put like actual meaning and like your actual like yeah. upbringing into your music. Yeah. Too. Definitely, man. I think the thing, it's funny you say that because B was telling me the other day, I was talking to him, he was like, bro, like, you know, we all got tattoos, man. Like, you know, we all got tattoos at a certain point. We all got, uh, you know, kind of like dedicated our life to, uh, you know, uh, elements that we had going, or things that we had going on. You know, we mm -hmm. all dedicated our life to certain things. And, uh, you know, B was like, you were just always the one that dedicated everything the most. Like, you got LG and D on your neck, like, that's your click. You know what I mean? That's your gang. You got uh, you got tats like all over your body, like <clears throat> representing what you stand for. You know what I mean? And you always rap about shit that you know is is prevalent and relevant in your life and and what's going on. So I think just that is really why I be why I be still here. You know what I mean? Why That's I'm real really shit. still here. I mean, I started when I was like sixteen. Me and Colin really was start. Me and Colin Tilly started rapping and shit. You know, he had a, he had a little rap name named Cutter. He was like C Cutter. Back in the day, it was like a joke. 
You know what I mean? But that's when I started, like, 16, started music. And then, you know, I'm like, bro, I'm 29. To be honest, people think I'm younger, yeah. but, like, I'm 29 now. I've been in the game for a minute, so it's just, you know, it's all it's all a spectrum. Young L always stood for Young Legend? Nah, it's my name's Lloyd, bro. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? so, oh shit. Yeah, so it's, it's Young L, just Young Lloyd. But, okay. Uh, it was funny because, like, I always felt like I always wanted to be like Jay-Z. It's always like a, like a, Jay Z was like my my idol like growing up like straight Blueprint was like my favorite album like I listened to it every day faithfully like yeah that was the best one yeah I was like damn like why everybody like Reasonable Doubt <laughs> no, but, no, I would real. way rather listen to Blueprint than Reasonable Doubt I respect Reasonable yeah. Doubt but I, I, you know the older it is the the less I like the rapping typically like the more, the newer it is the better I don't know I'm, I, I I listen to like all new stuff. I feel it yeah. and like yeah I would listen to like a lot of Young Chris and Young Gun so I just felt mm. like man I want to be Young L. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm be Young Facts. L. Dude, Facts. Young Chris and Young Guns were dope as fuck yeah. for a minute there. Hella underrated for sure. We Feeling could probably crazy. sit here right now and make a playlist of like 15, 20 songs from them that yeah. uh, fire. 20? Definitely. Like, look you don't think I could get to 20? They got some You're Lego pushing it, bro. I 20? think I could, I could definitely hit 10. Okay, I'm going to do this. I could fuck with you on 10, but damn, 20? Okay, so who is this? Is it a challenge? This is, we got to make a Young Guns mixtape of 10 songs that we can agree are fire at this point. Oh, no, do, I'm not going to say I can name them. I just... But I'm gonna work on this. This is a project. I'm gonna oh, get no, going. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got to reach. Oh, can't stop, won't stop, man. Uh, yeah, Off well, time. that's definitely number one. Getting to eleven. Okay, Pink Dolphin. So then you you're you're making some stuff here and there, like not taking it super serious. I'm guessing. And then at what point does it change into something more? With the clothes? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, it kind of changed when we when we really. Uh, I think it all changed really when um when we went to uh, <coughs> when me and uh, one of my partners we went to um. <coughs> We went to Chris Brown's video shoot, the uh, my last with uh, Big Sean. Big Sean, yeah. Yeah, so it all changed from that point on. Like we really realized what product placement can can do for for like a a, a clothing brand. At that at least at that time, it, what it could have done. Why did you have some what of them wearing it in the video? Yeah, because what we did was like we just I I was my it was my first time going really going to a video shoot and like trying to place my gear on somebody, so I didn't really know what to do. You know, at the time I had my partner Nima there. He was um he was really in the ear of the stylist who was styling Chris for a minute. So he was talking to the stylist for a minute and just I I felt like he was kind of working some angles. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna peep this scene. So I was looking around. I just seen like Taz Arnold over there with like yeah. five Fendi belts. Like <laughs> I was like, bro, what the fuck is this shit like? You know what I mean? Can I take one? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, but it was just clean, just seeing, you know, people like really, really pushing a pushing the hard line out there, you know, really like trying to get the video, whoever's in the video as fly as they can be. So we was like, look, just can can we get Chris to wear this this crew neck in this these little coin pouches? You know what I mean? Oh damn. Bro, that, mind that you, this is shit point. that we've like never got placed. Mm. And this shit that we that's like not even good, really good quality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But we're like, you know, at the time we're like, you know, it was probably gonna go. So he wore it and was just Chris really, you know, we we get some big salute to Chris Brown because he really did that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. He really did that for us. But so is that like the kind of thing that you was that how you guys came up at that time? In your opinion, was basically just getting crazy product placement all the time because that was sort of a new. Yeah, a lot of that was, people weren't doing that the way that they are now at that time. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of it was product placement, but a lot of it, bro, was like we had somebody who works with us named Colt Connors. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's a beast with the sales. Ah, uh, it's yeah. like you can't. You know, if you don't have nobody to do sales, yep. then you're not shit. That's always a super you know I mean? underrated thing for any any business. Yeah. It's a big shout out to Colt Connors. So you need, you need the street runners, you feel me? <laughs> so so the the brand starts well, I guess I wanna continue on before we get into like the later stages of Pink Dolphin and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to figure out what it was like with this whole wild ride of you guys sort of blowing up as the pack and then when things maybe started to change and you started to realize like, oh, okay, maybe we're not gonna be a group forever. Yeah. I mean it was just like I think uh you know, uh we all it came to a point where we just had different ways we wanted to rap. Like mm -hmm. I think I like, be one to rap a certain way. He was wanting to be have it, have the freedom to do whatever he wanted to do on a track. I think a lot of times, like maybe Stunna wanted to go a certain way. Maybe Uno wanted to go a certain way. We would be like Uno, take that verse off, and it'd be like Nah. So it'd be like certain things we had to deal with in a studio that didn't really, you know, it would be like we trying to make some happen. So we kept bumping heads. So it was like at that point, it was anybody's shot to go solo. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So Is I felt like the fact that B took it, it was good. 
I was it was great because I mean nobody else was taking it. So he yeah. took off running like he went and got signed by SODMG. Yeah. Was that when it was the first sign like oh okay this is the dynamics changing? It was like for I was nobody was really like we were kind of looking at it from a distance like we couldn't really say none. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like I think when the group started to kind of like go go different ways and separate into different aspects of you know whatever whatever we had going was that. I think when we when we couldn't get all all of us to the to the shows or whatever, like yeah. we beastie with the shows, like we'll kill show, we'll kill any show we book for. Even if you book me and Keith, you book me and Uno, like just me, yeah. just Keith. We all know how to work shows. Right. It's just off the even strength DJs, of y'all like, music. Yeah, know? like even DJ shit. But like at the time when we wasn't seeing eye to eye on how like how we wanted to do shows mm. and how we wanted to set shows up and do the business with the shows and everything and in, involving shows, that's when it was like kind of like then we got to step back in. And really, you know, figure out. Well, that's a money too. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. And the shows we always, are always we was always splitting shit four ways. Yeah, we was always that splitting must be shit tough too. Ways. You feel me? Like dealing with like three Light other way. people. You feel me? Lightweight it was, but like yeah. honestly, it came to a point where like I wasn't even taking no rap money. I was like, yeah. bro, I, I don't even want rap money no more. Y'all can have this. I'm just gonna take the beat money because that's fifty. Yeah, off top. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, so yeah, you were seeing a lot yeah. of a lot of shit. Yeah, off yeah, top. like even when we got stomped the yard in the soundtrack. You know, Damn, we got bands in the stomped the yard soundtrack. That was. That was that was a soft, you know, bag. nice, that nice was a little soft bag. bag. A nice bag. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice soft bag. bag. <laughs> Not even a soft bag. That was a heavy. Yeah, that was a yeah, you, bag. yeah you were being hella modest with that. I was being modest. Yeah, that when was you a when you look back at that time though, are you like as an older dude? Are you like, damn, we should have stuck together and kept making that damn show money for a couple more years? Man, you know, I don't feel like it's ever over, man. To be honest with you, I talked to all these fools. Like, you know, we clicked up forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a matter of when time, you know, comes around for for it to happen. Like, you look at. You know, other groups, maybe a little older, that broke up, you know what I mean? Or grow, groups younger that broke up. But, you know, we always in communication. I don't think we ever really broke up. And people you know? always want to see that reunion. Yeah, they always going to want to see us on stage. So if, it's just a matter if of... If you don't go on stage yeah. for a couple of years, then it almost makes it more valuable yeah. in a way, yeah. Yeah, and definitely the fact that, like, we get into things other than music. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. that B's, like, doing a lot of this... Uh, these like speeches and different right. speeches and going to like uh Lachma and doing things down there and like everywhere mm -hmm. he's he's been he's been at it's good for it's always gonna be good for me and good for the rest of the group yeah it's a good look for all y'all uh just just to like interject back real quick was like the time where like things started falling off like between all you guys together was this like after like like ba like the bass boys like album like or like maybe like uh I mean like to be honest, like nah, like we we finished that. That was fine. Like we, yeah. every, anytime we could get in the, get in the studio together, it was good. Like at the time no. I was younger. Bass Boys was two thousand seven, right? Or two was it later? No, that it was like been. like that was like eight, like maybe almost two thousand eight, maybe like maybe almost nine. So I had to check my iTunes. Or so Lil B signs to SODMG though, and like, did he ever really put much out? under Soldier Boy and what was you guys' relationship like with Soldier Boy at that time? Because you guys both kind of came up with him and he was yeah. sort of on a very similar wave as you guys. Yeah, that's our boy. Like I mean He just had many waves. Yeah. I mean I think really with like us growing up around him, I mean we didn't grow up around him. Yeah, we didn't grow up around him, but I mean at least with the putting music out in the same wave as Soldier, I think like, you know, uh we we kind of learned from him. You know what I mean? I think B learned a little from him. I mean, I I can't say he did or not, but I can speak for myself. Like I, I learned a little from Soldier. At mm -hmm. least at least a little. At least to say. So uh yeah, I mean me doing a mixtape with Soldier was definitely like one of my biggest accomplishments. Like I feel like I got it on you know, now that I got my fifteen solo mixtapes on iTunes and shit, like everything's, you know, kinda coming towards like kinda making sense, making more sense, you feel me? So What was the tape you did with him called? Damo Damo Mario. Which one? Uh, the soldier, oh, tape? soldier uh that was domo and mario versus the world oh hell yeah yeah so that was like that was like a, a minute ago but i think yeah i did like pretty much all the beats like fki did a few um yeah y'all fucking with fki back yeah then. yeah That's it was like, like i went and produced with them like way back like before they was doing a lot of stuff like uh i went and produced with them in atlanta like we spent a lot of time in atlanta like even with with Soldier, I spent a lot of time in his condo in atlanta just working on music for our project so but like even before like Cause like B was the first one who who linked up with Soldier and then yeah, he started yeah. doing shit after. But like yeah. even a, like around that time, like that's when like the whole bass guy like persona was really like Creative. big solidified, yeah, you yeah. know. But also you were doing, you had a very strong run too. You were doing your own solo shit. You were doing yeah, like that bad that's fucking true. drop top swag. And I mean like I think my solo shit, the biggest solo shit I probably did was probably the one with Fader, probably the John Nash take, yeah. probably the Enigma 
or Chama Nash tape, yeah, when I sampled all Image and Heat. Yeah. I think that was big because it got me recognition by her. Like she hit me up on, on Twitter. She was like, yo, you just, I don't know if this is legal, but uh, this is pretty dope. <laughs> Damn, really? And, uh, yeah. She like, didn't try to hit you with the lawsuit or Nah, that? yo, she was mad cool. Like we worked in the future. Like she was like, I want you to produce on um on Sparks or whatever. I think that was her. Next Could you explain time. like who she is for people who don't? Yeah, oh don't yeah. Know. Image and Heap is like a, uh, you know, she's a Grammy nominated. I think she won Grammy for like mixing or engineering one of her projects. She's from uh, Europe. And she's like hella famous on, on hella levels. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, so I have she, always heard that name, and I didn't know who the fuck yeah, it was like either. Yeah, like Clams Casino, kind of like when he produced, um, you know, he produced "I'm God" for Lil B. That kind of like opened my eyes to her music. I was like, "Yo, who is this chick?" I was saying, I was saying on this sample, "I'm God." Oh, like, that's that a, yeah, that's the chick from that. Yeah, sample. so I was peeping, and I was like, okay. So I went in depth and started like sampling a lot of her live shit and a lot of her like acapellas, and like I got like Freeway on one of the joints. <laughs> And um, I just was trying to go crazy with it. And, and you know, Fader, they had just put me on a cover like a couple, like maybe like a year before that or something. Damn, so. that was such a fucking moment because it was the split <clears throat> cover with Odd Future and you guys, right? Yeah, Odd yeah. Odd Future on the other way because that okay. was when you could flip it back and forth. My yeah. old nigga coming through with the oh, clutch no. references. I remember, it was yeah. To be honest, it was us on the cover. It was like Odd Future on the inner cover, some shit. Right. It was Leaky Lee on the bottom. Yeah, she was on the bottom. But that was because that was yeah, the first time that Odd I Future, think. I mean, I'm cool. I'm cool with Taco for sure. I've seen Taco at Mac Miller's show. He was he was he was cool, but I don't think Tyler liked me, bro. Really? Why? I don't know. Like, I mean, I asked him for a free shirt one time, and he said I couldn't have one, bro. I was a shirt? Yeah, I asked him for a free shirt. He <laughs> was it? What, one, bro. Was when they were doing uh, when they had the the store over yeah, on Fairfax? Yeah, they had the store on Fairfax or whatever. He could probably afford to give you a shirt now. I want our future shirt. He it probably was, could have afforded it then too. Uh, it was a, it was a lot of politics like yeah, back then. That it niggas was funny. Don't even it was funny. It was funny because like I yeah I heard all the politics. Really, there was yeah. pack, pack odd future beef. I mean, people no. no. It was just like they want like it was a you lot. know Anwar Carrots wanted that store. Ah uh, okay. So he didn't get that store. So it was kind of like they they didn't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, really? they, they they ended up getting like the off like a store like off La Brea like a random ass street. Uh, 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 Anwar and Casey Veggies and like all them. Like, They're mad cool though. Like I went to one of his art shows. It was or one of his like no, yeah, shows. Was crazy. Anwar and shit. Yeah, Anwar. Like he's cool as fuck. yeah, yeah, he, he's cool as fuck. It, it was just a lot of behind the scenes shit that was going on. And it was there. like mad shit I would hear from other people and not know if it was really true. So I couldn't even really take take no action on nothing. Yeah. I was just no, chilling. You know? That's the worst when you hear about somebody talking shit about you or whatever, and you're just like, man, I don't even know if but I believe honestly, this. Honestly, I thought some of their shit was cool because like they were hyphy as fuck. Yeah. Nobody can't tell me that our future's not high fee as bro, fuck, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Like, these, first... I heard they went to like some house and just broke hella like furniture, bro. <laughs> bro. Like, I would hear stories like they went to so-and-so's house that said somebody hella famous, you feel me? What? I'm and broke tell... all their furniture, bro. I'm like, that's lit, bro. Because I know who's be watching talking about? Go Dumb USA. Like, I'd be watching Go Dumb USA, you feel me, in the Bay. Motherfuckers be stomping people cars out for no reason and shit. <laughs> shit bro, be hilarious. Bro, one of their, one of their first like <laughs> viral videos was in like... 2009, 2010, they had just had a video on YouTube called Hyphy, and they were just going dumb to I think fucking believe that shit. Bopper. I seen it when they were on that yeah. Mack truck or something. Bro, bro, they were all over the place, and Tyler had a yeah. broke foot in a cast. That was hilarious, And they were just yeah, going they dumb going to crazy. Booty Bounce Bobber, you feel me? Yeah. Bro, yeah, hey, hey, Jasper, Jasper, I'm sorry. Actually, I ain't going to drop no names, but <laughs> let me just say that me and one of the founding members from Our Future broke into a really popular rapper from the 90s, Son's House. Shit. Oh my god! And his shit. his Hot name his name <laughs> rhymes with rice G. Is a drink, and we robbed that nigga son. So <laughs> crazy! He's self snitching. This he does this a lot. Academics. Well, this is not like academics. dangling the back of coke yeah, out and shit like he normally does. <laughs> I mean, I would, but I don't want to. You know, <laughs> he, I'm just keeping it. I'm just keeping it. Real. There has been okay. times in the past where he told stories about selling That's coke, and he didn't see. even. You know, when you tell a story about some, something, I gotta, good? I gotta say something. Now. I feel like I gotta say something. <laughs> like, yeah, like stop. <laughs> no, but you're not like, no, like I've done some like you know what I mean. I gotta speak on some crazy shit or something. He got stories and shit. Man. Let's I hear usually, it. I usually have some crazy ass stories. Well, he already told us he never hit a safe. I could tell you a crazy ass story. All right, look. So I was this is when I almost got a lawsuit. I was like 19. I was on tour with the pack, and I don't know if this is gonna be on legal record, but I'm just gonna say it. Fuck it. Got your limitations. Self snitching. Okay. Unless it's murder after like seven years, you're good. Nah, like, look, so I legit, like, it was the, like, the end of this show, you feel me? And, um, I, we was all like, you know, we was, my hands was kind of sweaty, you know what I mean? It was the end of the show. It was like a, a gym class show. We was out there with Gary Archer, legend Gary. And, you know, he kind of saved my ass in this one. What happened was, it was the end of the show. We was like, yeah, say, say, you know, y'all ready for gym class heroes? Y'all happy about this show? Like, turn up. 
You know what I mean? Like, we was telling the crowd, turn up, turn up. It was like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I threw my mic. Yeah, on accident, though. Huh. You feel me? On accident. Huh. I was just like, whoop. The mic went flying, looked like, like, like hella fast, though. You feel me? Hit a bitch in the head and cracked her whole shit. Like her whole oh shit was God. just whopped. You remember? Wow. You remember what like like what show it was? Like what? Like man, what city? the city? Nah, man. I think it might have been like weirdly like Arizona or something. That was a big ass spot like that. Yeah, it was tucked, but like it was just funny. Just not funny, bro. It wasn't funny. You it get in trouble, up. huh? You get in trouble? Oh uh, no, no. I get- seen I seen him stage dive with fucking steel toed boots on one time and fucking cut some kid's head open and the kid's threatening to sell the uh, sue the venue like immediately. No, nah, that ain't even what happened, bro. <laughs> and he'll be trying to sue. That's crazy. Man. Nah, yeah, but yeah. like they couldn't like the the fault goes onto the venue though. It don't even really go on to you. That's probably what happened. Yeah, I think I just shook. Maybe I just shook him. The Maybe. nigga, the nigga I made you get me. Sued too. The nigga made me like the security, like the head security from the venue made me go out and like apologize to the kid though. But what yeah. was fucked up was it was two kids that got injured, but the nigga with the main injury, like the nigga like whose skull you could see, he oh. wasn't tripping. He wasn't <laughs> tripping, bro. He was like stoked. He was like, nah, it's all good. But it was another nigga. Little house fun. Exactly. But yeah. it was another nigga who barely had like a little scratch on his forehead. Cause yeah. you know I'm a fat nigga. I landed on two niggas. You feel me? <laughs> so the nigga with the with the minor cut, his brother, his older brother was tweaking because he's like, nah, he's 16. This is his first show. Like, you know, like like y'all got him fucked up. Like, yeah. we go, like you know, blah blah. Yeah. blah. And like, they made me go apologize to the little nigga or whatever. And like, I felt oh. bad, but I'm just like, man. Nigga, you better know what you're getting yourself into going to yeah. these shows. You feel me? Bad. Yeah, the shows always. I think even now it's damn near worse for shows. Like, Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Nowadays know. You, you hear it's like okay, everybody's on the um, who's gonna get whooped and, and filmed and get stripped. You know what I mean? Oh, you'll be on academics the next day. Yeah, exactly. Oh. exactly. He'll tell you the whole moves, story. <laughs> moves swiftly. Like you know what I mean? You gotta. Sometimes you gotta be. You know what I mean? You gotta. You gotta young dolphin. You know what I mean? You gotta. Get ah, that, you gotta. Young gotta get dolphin. that bulletproof. You know what I mean? Yo. You got a Randy Moss. Yo, know? free black youngster. Crazy. You hear about that shit? That shit's I, crazy. And they got out already. Didn't he? he bell according to the cops, he did the shooting in a van that he rented I under didn't his know, own name. Damn. Come on, that's bro. what the cops are saying. Yeah, well, obviously they're gonna say that, but you think that black youngster pulled the trigger, bro? Come on, that is literally what the cops are saying. And now I hope that it didn't happen, and I would hope that he wouldn't be so stupid because he's literally like putting videos on Instagram of him in Young Dolph's hood with all the guns out. If he actually did that and then went and did the shooting himself, he's the craziest motherfucker alive. Hey, but free my nigga Roscoe the goat because Roscoe was the nigga with Young Thug in the video when Young Thug was yeah. dissing Lil Wayne. He was the one that was pointing the yeah. burner up, and he was the one that got caught calling yep. Birdman That's after real. the shooting. That really happened too. Free yeah. Roscoe the goat. Yeah, he's man. still in jail. Motherfuckers are crazy. This day and a age. lot of people in the system. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever get into any like like early legal trouble like when yeah. you're were you guys so like that wild, bro? Shit, dog, we were fucking crazy, bro. Like, cause like, we y'all... stole these golf carts from the Aladdin <laughs> Casino, bro, in <laughs> Vegas after we had this show with Little Sammy. Which one was Little Sammy? Little Sammy bro, had what? all the bitches, bro. So bro, we had dumb bitches did? at the he show. He was like the I like the way you he worked with. Yeah, he made me. that call me through the phone with with, with Soldier. Oh, kiss me through the phone. Kiss me through oh the yeah. Phone. Phone. First time I ever did ecstasy, I sang that song the whole fucking night. <laughs> hey, but you know what? They don't even credit my nigga. A little Sammy on the chorus of that, you feel me? Damn little, little Sammy was like, remember he was like, he came up when like little Bow Wow and them niggas was coming up. He had a little R and B song. Niggas, bro, niggas don't be giving credit to niggas, bro. Yeah, we stole them golf carts. We had to do a legit night in a bullpen in Vegas County, Damn, bro. How old were y'all back then? I was eighteen. Me and me and Stunner had to go to County. We was eighteen and and Uno and B went to juvenile. They was sixteen, seventeen. Oh, uh, 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 them two are younger than y'all. Yeah. Uno and Uno and B is younger than me and Stunner. Speaking of, speaking of Uno, do you feel like he like kind of gets like left out when like you guys like name come up and as far as like crediting people and like crediting like you guys as a whole? Do you feel like Uno gets left out sometimes? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, because like when I I don't know. Not that I've noticed, but yeah. I mean, everybody got their preference, you know. Who yeah. They like, and it's everybody a, entitled to their own opinion. And it's always like different being like. In the eye of the storm, you feel me? And then, like, looking on it from, like, an outside perspective, true, you feel true, me? True, yeah. Because, like okay. I said, like, to me, I always thought that, like, you were, like, the most popular one, but maybe that's because 
I was a fan and like I knew you were making the beats and I, you feel me like shit like yeah. that. So maybe to somebody else that didn't know, you feel me? True. A, a lot of my like me and my best friend used to argue all the time. He thought Stunna was the best one. Man, a lot of people do because her Stunna's early music was bro, crazy. His, bro. Bar, his bars were crazy. He's still so yeah. fucking good. He's his raw. Bar. He's raw. He's a beast. Like he he's never stopped going hard. It's just that like. I think people want to, want to, you know, they got to pay close attention now, really. No, I'm talking, hey, hey, shout out to Stunner, because he pulled up to my mom's crib, like, yeah, he's like lit. two years ago, and he came with too many niggas, and I was like, nah, bro, this ain't even <laughs> like an after party like that, like, my mom is like at work. Lit. You talking about some, like, after the house party type shit? It was shit? like after him on everything oh type my God. shit. You are so the type that would invite Stunner Man and 10 of his homies back to your nah, mom's I, crib. <laughs> nah, I ain't back, it was, it, it was like me, the homie, and like some bitches, <laughs> and one of the bitches, shout out Ari. I already knew uh, Stunna. It was like, can Stunna come through? I'm like, yeah, for sure. That nigga pulled up like three cars deep. Mm. I'm like, bro, you can't pull up on Doty Block like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all niggas tripping, nigga. Stunna's a plug. Man. Off top. Yeah, shout out to Keith, man. That's so funny. Hey, so at what point did like Pink Dolphin sort of change? Because yeah. a lot of people think you don't have anything to do with it anymore, but you were yeah. talking earlier about how you still do. Man, it, to be honest, like... The only way anybody would will really be able, I think, the only way, the only truth, the real truth about it is the only thing that separates me from before working with the company and how I work now is that, like, we have a different type of business agreement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a different type of business agreement because it came to a point where uh, a business deal had to be made. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So like, low key, like that got made and. I got what I came for as yeah. far as fashion is concerned. So it's like I'm able to function, fluctuate however I want to. With, yeah. with whatever I do, I'm not tied down to anything. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to what I represent, I stand for Pink Dolphin because that's my baby. You feel me? Yeah. I right. created that. You got it so. on your face, bro. So what, exactly. it just, did it just get so big at a certain point and there's a lot of different people who own parts of it and then at a certain point it just kind of didn't make yeah. sense for I you mean, to... I think like anything kind of happens like that after it's been around for a minute almost like anything period i think it just has to change with the times you know and i think um kind of like it does kind of come into a point where like where like uh you know ownership and business deals come into play and i think uh it's all about how uh it's a lot of a lot of it is just timing and how uh how you're perceived by the public you know mm -hmm. what i mean at the time you know what i mean so how would you describe your role with the brand now um, I have a good relationship with the creative director, Cena, and that's mm -hmm. like my bro. Like we go, you know, we go way back to the point where we were working in his mom's like front yard, tie dyeing all the t-shirts, trying to get them right to go on a store. You See, know I mean? never knew who he was until I saw the video of him talking about Ian Connor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was just I about to ask too. you about that shit. Yeah, I don't even, man, it's funny, yeah, because I don't even know about that shit. But when I seen Ian, I seen him in traffic or whatever. I was just walking down the street because. I was on La Brea or something, buying some clothes or some shit. I seen him with like a couple of his homies. And uh, he was like, man, I, I, I didn't want to do that shit, bro, but uh, I, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's like, 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 Ian like, Connor. I was like, what's Like the borderline fuck? some disrespect for shit or no? Nah, he was just like, he was. I didn't understand what he said. So I didn't know <laughs> about what it was at the time. So like maybe like a year later, I went and seen the video and I was like, oh, this shit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I can't really be on a point where I could get like get Cav Cena back every time he get into some problems. You know? Yeah, but no, that's for I sure. Mean, you know what I mean? So. But he's like the main dude that runs the whole thing now. Yeah, he's the heart of it. He okay. he pretty much is the heart of it, the creative the creative part of it. Yeah, I think he hates me because I'm I'm too down with FTP and we made fun <laughs> oh, yeah, of, we I made fun that. of him on the podcast or something. I didn't even know like what that was about, but I remembered it. It's like I know his girl, so I know I know who he is now, but like I didn't really know I didn't really. Know, like I know softest, mm -hmm. so I know. Shout like, out Angel. Yeah, she's cool. So uh, when it, when it came down to him, like the first thing that I heard, and like honestly, I'm a, I'm a huge like Gleesh fan right now. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. But like I heard that like somebody was like performing outside of my store, going hella crazy and shit. Like I got word of that shit by a fan. So I was like, I just um, I kind of like asked a couple people about it, like what it was, and they were like, yeah, they were just out front of our store doing like they don't have a store, so they use a U-Haul, so mm -hmm. they were just doing their thing out front and. I really looked at it as they were making our store pop harder anyways. So Thanks. it was kind of cool. So we weren't really tripping. But then I think it was something on, like, uh, I looked on his Twitter account, and I ain't really with that Twitter <laughs> shit. Like, I wouldn't yeah. even go there with really anybody for anything because I don't think it's worth it. It's just, you know, Twitter is like Twitter fingers or, you know, whatever yeah. you want to call it. But it was kind of like I hit him up, and I was like, what's up? Like, I was like, what's up? 
and I just want to see what he's going to say. You know, I mm-hmm. hit him on Twitter, and I'm like, go, what's up? And then he said some shit, and I was like, I kind of just brush it off. Yeah. I mean, but let's, let's be real. That's probably exactly what he wanted. You feel me? Like he Yeah, like, he wanted a reaction. So I told him, I think I had, I had, I had actually, yeah, yep, I had DM'd him, and I was like, bro, like, I'm not with this fashion rivalry yeah. like this is gay, especially since bro. you guys like didn't know each other personally so yeah like, i was yeah. like bro like i don't even know you like i'm not with this fashion rivalry like i miss me with that shit but zach used to be like the streetwear fucking killer on twitter because he just used oh, yeah. to wild out i don't I don't think i've seen him do it in like many years but he used to wild out about yeah, I mean, all the brands I, he didn't fuck with I mean, and shit i always like i like leash so i've seen him wearing it like it's cool like i'm not a hater you know you yeah. know you know what like honestly like what i think it was like not even just with like them just with like other people like I've I've even heard like like Tyler like like drop a line about like Pink Dolphin like in like not the great fashion yeah like, like, in, in, like not the best way but I feel like it was just like some just like rebel against what mm-hmm. was like so popular like at the time I mean type you shit, gotta you look at it like they lost their store to us damn near. Yeah, like, it was like they, we couple, were selling out the away. store for we were like selling out the block for a minute to the point where like they couldn't pay for their store or whatever they couldn't do their store so like. When I look at it like, you know, he was dropping shit, I'm like, yo, we his numbers don't lie, you feel me? Yeah. So But like at the end of the day though, like them niggas and like anybody who was like a young black man from California who like is in that age group, they would be lying if they didn't say that you guys had an influence and that, you know, like y'all niggas didn't like pave the way for like certain yeah. shit. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, it was cool, like they were always never to my face on some funny shit. Like I would see Tyler on the block all the time. Like he was skating down the block every day. Like I was on the block too. Yeah. So it wasn't never no salt. It was just like we were just kinda like staying out each other way. Like way, you know. No, I respect his grind for sure. Like he's a he's a mogul in, in today's rap game, you feel me? For sure. Thanks. That's just strategy. Lyrically, just lyrically. When it comes I mean? to fashion, though, it's like, that's strategy. Like, you can just talk shit about somebody. Fucking try to, like, that's how you plant your flag as, like, a rapper or a fucking fashion brand a lot of times is just to be like, yo, like, this is what I don't fuck with, and that lets people know what you are saying that you are. Yeah, even with that whole fucking Ian shit, like, he did a collab, like, with y'all, or, like, maybe not directly with you, because, mm. you know, but, like, he did a collab with, like, y'all brand, brand and yeah, then yeah. was just, like... Kind of shading it yeah, off you know? or whatever. It's, yeah. it's it's all strategy and it's all just like people people love an underdog story at the end of the day mm-hmm. and people want to be the underdog and like y'all niggas were in zoomies and motherfucking yeah. everywhere you know like y'all like everywhere y'all were kind of more like the commercial like streetwear yeah. brand so like i feel like they were just like taking it on some like oh we don't fuck with this yeah. we have some underground like, i could see that see, too i mean it's kind of like similar to the rap game bro like you know I swear to god yeah it's hella similar like i could relate I mean, right. most rappers have clothing lines now, or at least sell a lot of clothing. But now, like you were saying earlier, though, like, it's all about the, the like, connection, you feel me? And, like, that stems back to, like, high fashion, you feel me? Like, yeah. fucking niggas, like, niggas, like, wear Tommy Hilfiger, like, or, like, Ralph Lauren, whatever, because of the designs, but also it's the name attached to it, you feel me? And it's, like, to be. And it's yeah. like, niggas wouldn't fuck with Pink Dolphin as hard if Young L wasn't behind it. Niggas wouldn't fuck with... FTP if like they didn't fuck with Zach or like you know it's, it's like it's all about it's not really about like the brand I mean it is about the brand but it's about like the the people like attached to it too at the end of the day you feel me yeah definitely it's like yeah it is you're right well because if y'all niggas didn't have that hard ass MySpace uh fucking influence you feel me like bro you bummed when MySpace died oh like the MySpace was like I don't even I don't even think so nah Cause you I, had a, I had a decent page on it. I was getting most of my money from uh, Pink Dolphins. My I was things. thinking, like, Pink. I had MySpace, but you were popping when you had MySpace. So that right. must have been nice. I wasn't popping when I had MySpace. I was a regular old loser. Were you yeah. Were you yeah. selling? Uh, my bad, I mean, cut you off. Oh, no, you good. You were, um, did you have an official uh, Pink Dolphin site when you were still running off MySpace? Or were you just, like, selling it, like, off? Karma Loop. Karma Loop was a right. big part of our early success. And um, Big Cartel, too. That's crazy you brought up like that Chris Brown thing because that was one of the, that was like the first celebrity I saw on y'all blog because I used to pay attention to y'all blog. Uh-huh. And I remember y'all like did like a little like thing like when that video came out with him and uh, Big Sean. Yeah. And, and that was also when like Tisa uh, was like first popping off too. You used to, you used to rock yeah. Tisa and shit too. Yeah. I mean, Taz, like he knows who I am. Like Taz is cool as fuck. Like he, he was, a, he inspired us. Like he had talks with like me and Cena at like mm-hmm. the magic conventions, early magic conventions. And we would go out of Vegas. He would be talking to us like, yo, y'all, y'all can do this shit. 
And then sure. he was always the one we were looking up to. Like when we went up to his studio in LA, I don't know if he still is at the same studio, but he had this crazy studio on downtown, bro. It's downtown? like is the it by- dopest fucking lab ever. Is it? Is it I'm behind a, a warehouse shoe yeah. sale? Yeah, you know where it's at. I just went to a party the underground there. underground part? I just yeah. went to a party there. Like, bro, that's the most ago. lit, the lit spot, bro. Like his his studio like made me look at the way people record a different way. You know I mean, you gotta really be in that zone. You gotta do whatever you can do to get in that zone. And when you're in that zone, you don't, don't leave it. What type of people was like recording at the studio? I just seen him there. I just invited there for Taz like makes a few music minutes. too? Yeah. I didn't even know that. See? He makes music there. He had his whole studio. And you see how y'all got these here? Mm-hmm. He was decked out like in the soundproof, but it was like like neon. Like every wall was like neon. And he mm-hmm. had lights like flashing, like disco ball, like crazy shit, like everywhere in the whole lab. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, I got a question. When you guys were first going on tour and stuff, how hard were you guys wilding in terms of one, girls, and two, drugs? Man, okay, I didn't start. Because you were real young. This is funny. Like, I didn't really start smoking. I mean, I was smoking loud every now and then, but I wasn't starting really spending major money on weed until I was, like, legit having, you feel me, Mm -hmm. enough money to spend on it. So until I was, like, 21. But, like, when I like as far as, like, the drugs, it wasn't really much drugs involved. Like, we wasn't really playing with it like that I think because we was not really honestly we was just smoking weed we didn't really have access to all the shit we just had weed and, and bottles and shit we'd be on that shit for mm-hmm. sure I mean I remember one time we stole uh Fabulous Fabulous uh-huh. had a, a a a crystal bottle in his uh in his little uh in his little uh safe or whatever one of these little uh not safe but like a little uh refrigerator or whatever one of these shows and, in the and green we, room and shit. yeah so it was like damn they got the crystal bro <laughs> oh god so it was like it was like we was just juiced up on that type of shit so it was like but what about the girls? Are you guys heavy on MySpace, having crews come through every night? The thing about it is, like, the the MySpace was the perfect thing if you were single and on tour because, like, you could just connect with different cities and areas mm-hmm. hella fast. You could so search like, yeah, we're going to get these bitches. I forgot about so that. So it's like, these bitches, like, hey, look at our music page. What you, what we hear. Like, what's up with it? You know what I mean? Come to the show, get you in free. You know, bam. You know, but me and Uno would be like, we looking for the, uh, what, what we say back in the day. We'd be like, look. We looking for this, like the real sleezers, you feel me? Like uh-huh. just like nodding off, like wait, you feel me? And the boppers. Yeah, we looking me? for the, the hoes, you feel me? The one yeah. that's like, ah. No, I like, fuck with yeah. that, man. I ain't really trying to be around <laughs> no like, girls who are like. Shit. No, I don't know weird shit like on no, on no Bill Cosby <laughs> shit, but on, you know what I mean? On some, you know what I mean? We trying to get on these drunk bitches. The ones we trying I like to the out. girls off drugs. That's hot to Straight me. up, man. So we was young. <laughs> so we was, you know, a couple of times, you know, bitches got ran. Straight up. Oh, you guys are all running. Yeah. Oh, really? You and Lil B and everybody all just training and together? Some, some Get the shooter some doing bitches, it too? Some bitches got done in. If you're you you trying to fuck L, you got to fuck B, you got to fuck Uno. You we would rap fuck, about the shit. Me? We had to live the shit, bro. Like, you, to, had to live. you wanna fuck Adam Twenty Two? You gotta fuck House Phone. You gotta fuck the cat. You gotta oh, fuck everybody. I mean, that's Why? still the motto. You feel me? Still fuck the cat. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got bitch, we got bitches topping off Tony like. Every day, man. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. He got mad followers. Tony got more clout than a lot of bitches clout, that stroll through here, bro. Clout ball right there. And he's about to get uh, he's about to get trimmed up and clean tomorrow. Oh, bro, man. I was telling him he was talking oh, about man. how 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 stacked he is. I'm like, nigga, he this is him on like slim mode right now. I like, feel like he where his where his sponsors at right now, bro. We got to get him some sponsors. I mean, this this, I mean, this is main sponsor right here. Yeah. We need a hairdresser. I'm or his manager, but to be honest, I don't really do a whole lot for him. Which is, you know, it's a lot of people have that story. He got swag though. He's, bro. You made the gram. That's all you had to do. Well, he's from Brooklyn, so I think that's why he's got so much swag. He sort of just came with it. He was homeless in Queens and Brooklyn for like three years before I got him. I heard that's what they told me. Yo, I got an idea right now. Pink Dolphin, Tony the Cat collab. (laughs) Pink Cat, (laughs) Pink Cat collab. That's like soon. damn near a sub brand for only cats, huh? Only cats, bro. Oh, a shirt where Tony the Cat, where half of his body is a dolphin or a mermaid. It's oh just my gonna god! Be his face See? and then the Japanese under. You know exactly. what I mean? And then like it's gonna ha- be on the little cat tees. Have him coming out the water. Your era was Ripping. when people really started Sauce. fucking with cats too, because I remember I had been promoting my cat like crazy on YouTube or just putting them in my videos and on MySpace and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, Odd Future comes out and it's like they're putting cats on everything. And I'm feeling like, yeah. damn, y'all took my cat wave. <laughs> the cat wave is huge. It's, yeah. it's damn, there now it's getting to the live cats now. Like yeah. live cats are getting popping. Wait, but it, can we talk about Lil B? Well, I just want to say, even Rippin' Dip. They had that fucking store right next to Supreme. Huge white cat on the outside. I'm like, y'all coming from my white cat title. Okay. I mean, I mean like, we could. I gotta get him a billboard or something, bro. Oh my god, I love that idea. He has He'll a billboard lit. right across the street with the homie on it. You should the yeah, whole that G thing. We could bro. get we could get a cat picture on there. I'm into that. You need to get Peta. Isn't that thing called Peta? Peta. Yeah, yeah, get Peta involved. Peta is yeah, actually right. what he is, a pedophile. Uh, <laughs> hey yo. Uh, 
I plead no contest. If she <laughs> if she didn't show me an ID, how am I supposed to? She's know? seventeen and eleven months. Hey, bro. Oh, hella funny. This is what we do. We red shirt bitches, man. You know? <laughs> she slide in your DMs. You be like, how old is you? She's like, I'm almost 18. Then you just keep her on a loop until you feel I like the idea of there being an app. An app for all wow. the underage girls you meet. You save them. And, you red shirt them. <laughs> and it like notifies you when like when their birthday is getting close. I don't want to actually act like this is a thing that I would actually do. because no, of course not. No, it's just a funny I idea. I will act like I gotta do because that's hilarious. No, you know what I had an idea? It is. Not Tinder, Kinder. <laughs> Tim, oh, Tinder, but for little kids. Oh, why? why? Because how we... are little kids meeting each other? I don't know. I don't really. At school, nigga, like yeah. normal people. But don't you think they should have access to dating apps as well? I mean, maybe <laughs> not dating, but like play dates. How are you gonna go out of the like region? Like, see, like we could be on Tinder, and you can go fly out to a bitch, or you could drive to a bitch that's is she far, <laughs> nigga? If you at middle school, you're five or six. You got a bike, right? Bro, you can't drive. You can't bike to another county. You can legit take a bus though. No facts, nigga. I was that Hop nigga on that bus. I was that nigga in high school, bro. I used to bus missions to go meet up with bitches. From bro, like, I remember one time I was driving from uh, from Berkeley to Stocks, and bro, I got a speeding ticket. My niggas was roasting me for like three hours about how I got a speeding ticket to see the bitch. I was like, nigga, you got a speeding ticket to see the bitch. But did nigga? you get the yams though? That's all that matters. Yeah, you know I split. Exactly. You know, I split. If you split no, it like I, a banana split, hate. that's all that matters. I you know what we were talking about the other day is how when you remember going to the arcade as a kid and your parents would like give you a bunch of candy and they give you like 20 bucks and you get all these quarters and you're just kind of going crazy, you know, the candy, doing all these video games and stuff. That's really like putting your kid into training for like going to Vegas to do a bunch of cocaine and Damn. go to clubs. Damn, I didn't even think about Pixie that. Pixie sticks are like a gateway drug to cocaine. Bro, have you ever snorted a Pixie stick? <laughs> I did when I was seventh grade when I was at fucking uh, Sunday school. <laughs> Hey, that just solidified that I was really white because I did that shit before too. You ever smoked a Slim Jim? That doesn't Next sound level. like a real thing. <laughs> I lit it up and I tried to smoke oh, it. Oh, well, because they're kind of hollow, right? Yeah, and I kind of like, I ate like half of it. Because remember they had like the super long ones <laughs> yeah. and they had like the kind of short ones? Yeah. The short one, I just lit it up on the stove and I like tried to puff it like a blunt. Mm. It hit like once or twice. The time. other day I almost tweeted, I'm addicted to mid and press Zans. Just because I thought it sounded funny, but then I was like, I don't want to say yeah, that. Nah, that's fucked up because people be dying because of that yeah. shit, bro. Well, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking people are really going to think I'm like off the press. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. You didn't even think nah, about people, the social consciousness. Like, oh, fuck, people be yeah. thinking that. Cause look like people, he off the press ends right I now. I be seeing people tweet about that shit. They be like, you motherfuckers know y'all on them press ends. Yeah. And y'all still on them press ends. Hey, that, that's, that used to be me. I'd be so thirsty. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> You gave me a freeze and I'm popping it. <laughs> you might be foaming at the mouth afterwards. I oh, heard man, some motherfuckers were, you know, out up north where they they got that shit killing people like legit. Like I heard about like at least two people, uh, two people who died off presents like crazy. Yeah. Like I guess they just making them and throwing. Like, yeah, they put like never, all kinds of fu yeah. fentanyl, all that yeah, you fucked know, up shit. In you know, there. you know what's crazy though? Like I saw Adam twenty two a pint, but he ain't know I mixed it with the Caro. <laughs> I hate you. I was actually thinking, as you said that, I'm like, you never sold me a pint. I don't even sip no more, bro. I just quit. You, you had to quit? How long ago? I just quit again, damn near. Yeah, I mean, I quit like damn near like, like two weeks ago, but I'm clean though. That's good. Yeah. What, for this interview? Yeah, for the syrup. <laughs> I got to get off um, the syrup so I can be coherent in the interview. Legit, I did. I can't drive to LA on syrup. Oh, hell no. No, no. From the Bay? We did a podcast with the full Black Day from New York the other day, and I was fucking, Shout I was Black drinking Dave. on one during it, and by the end of it, like, you could see it, that I'm like, this is like I'm I feel like, I don't even, I used to pour hella ounces into my juice, like, nowadays, I don't need, I just, I'll just drop like a one and a half, I'll be smoking. Yeah. I, don't, I can't do the whole, like, three, four, and a 20, like. This. That's insane. Like, this and, like, not sharing you. it either? It's quality now, it's quality, it's not act, you can't treat quality yeah. like it's act. Can't do that. Like, yeah. Can you testify for the times that when you hung out with Soldier Boy, was he really off the act like that, or was he perpetrating? Nah, he had act. Me and Soldier was sit. We had dinner. I don't think we had the same plug in L.A., but I know when we was in Atlanta, he had juice, and when we was in L.A., we lived across the street from each other in L.A. In downtown, and he had juice. All the time. I didn't even need him to tell me that. You can tell by listening to Soldier Boy talk that he's off the drink. He had juice in a <laughs> he had juice in a blender on time. Damn, yo, I used to work at Jamba Juice, bro, and this nigga came into my job with like a foe and was like, "You trying to drop this in my smoothie for me?" Yeah. Oh like, yeah, my god, I got you. It I was, was thinking that was with his foe. I didn't know, but now I heard that like if you keep your lean, if you keep your lean in the fridge, it take the codeine out. Really? Oh, if you leave it over too long? Too long, yeah, in the freezer or the fridge. Yeah, it'll probably spike like the um, 
fuck it up. The fucking, yeah, like the shit started like, um, what's it called? Like almost when you do like oil and water together, like it starts separating type some, shit. I don't know about all that, but I just know that it's like, it's like bad some scientific, for the lean. Yeah. yeah, some scientific shit like the, the pro meth will like, like raise to the top and like some more liquidy shit. Oh, shit. And then like the, the more sticky Dude, shit. Like, and if I see anything like that, I ain't gonna buy it. <laughs> Straight up. I don't know, you know why I mean? we're talking about lean so much, you. but. I do know a homie who goes to or used to go to Skid Row and ask homeless people for drink, and they would sell it to him. I've Man, heard you say this. Like, you would get probably the worst kind of drink from Skid Row. No, he's like he's like they would have some green, they got some yellow, and then I find some red. He's like, it's like they because uh, like they be on the motherfucking like government assisted be on some cherry, Medicare some cherry test. They all got bronchitis <laughs> and shit. They're getting hella pints. They probably don't even want it. They're saving it. They, they know even, it's worth money, or they don't even know. To be honest, like the people who got the most pints, bro, is old people, bro. Yeah, Everybody out here to be hitting licks on old people houses, be coming up on hella pints. We should do that. But that's why it'd be all these little rich white niggas. From the valley that be selling lean because mm. nigga or selling Zans because they mom got that shit in the cabinet or they auntie got the shit in the cabinet. Yeah. Granny got the plug. Nah, but it's like the rich kids in the valley who realize like, oh, if I get a bunch of pints, then I can hang out with Fredo Santana. <laughs> like I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars and then I can have some cool rapper friends. If you ever see one of your lame homies hanging out with a bunch of rappers on Instagram no. or something, they're probably going over and like no. giving them some drugs or something. That's the that's the way. That's the the L.A. lifestyle. Meet somebody rich and just kind of live off them. That's how I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Finesse this nigga, sold him some soft. <laughs> so what you got going on these days? What do we got to get out of the way before we uh, wrap right. this up? This has been a yeah, fun conversation. Yeah. I feel like so I learned fun. a lot. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, yeah, definitely, man. I got this Lloyd, self-entitled Lloyd project coming out on May 26th. I got a DJ gig with Sean in Oakland. I believe it's later this month, around the time, time of the 26th, the time of the release. That's in Oakland, so that's going to be lit. Um, yeah, I got uh, all 15 of my entire albums produced by me, uh, and not including the SS Mixtapes on iTunes. You can follow me on Instagram, at OneYoungL. Don't worry about all the fake Instagram. You feel me? My old Instagram mm -hmm. got hacked. I got caked, you feel me? So, uh, yeah, I mean, on the Twitter Young L underscore 2005. 2005. You know I mean? Yeah. Damn. Did you make that in 2005? I don't know. I think I was just, one day I was just super loaded and I was like, yo. 2005. Well, I don't think Twitter was around in 2005. I think it was like 2007. Yeah, yeah it's not even really lit. So it's just like, niggas, just, you know. Yeah. Could we get a part two to any like the, the, the classics? Like, you know, like Ellie, the LEM mixtape and like shit like that. Cause shit, like honestly, I was thinking about it. I don't know. It might be a, a I think it might be a part two of the Enigma Theory. It might be a part two of that. That's like, right. You were so ahead of your time, bro. Like, niggas appreciate it, bro. bro. 100. Bro, shit, bro. I think it's kind of fucked up that we didn't mention the cool kids the whole time. Cool kids go crazy. And that was bro. very much that era. And they, yeah, they had they a function with us. Similar shit where they like kind of changed the way a lot of motherfuckers were dressed. And they were right, at, nice. right ahead of all that shit, too. That's real shit. But you know what's crazy? It was like, like a little later, but like it was yeah. definitely like the same time. Like, yeah, cool time. kids. Could you see yourself, now, yeah. yourselves, is there still that chemistry where you could see yourselves actually making like a significant amount of uh, music as a group again? I think, yeah. I think because, you know, it's really just a time of like, I think it has to be like the right time for everybody in the yeah. group. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because like, I think even that comes down to just, just like how our vibes are going to be together. So mm -hmm. I think it's just based upon like us getting along. Yeah. We're, I mean, you guys like everybody been, has spaces. Yeah. Right? Everybody has space. You've been like knowing each other since you were so young that I'm sure there's a lot of like ego type stuff involved in everything. But like, you know, I feel like, yeah, that it would be a travesty if you did it without yeah. there being that, I mean, that energy, because after, if you're yeah. not getting along, it's going to sound fake. It's going to sound silly. But I feel like you guys are all at the age now where it's like, you wouldn't even come back together unless you were all in the same space and you guys were all like, you know, like, like you guys are all old enough to look at it like as the bigger picture now. That's why you could talk about old stories and yeah. shit, you know, because you know, Bad. like y'all niggas are grown shit. men now. Yeah. You it's, it's all legendary shit, you know. It's in it's in history, you know, and it's it's no reason why it can't stop. You feel me? That's Real shit, bro. It's crazy to think that when we're sixty, all the shit yeah, will seem right. like funny little <laughs> tiny details that we can probably barely remember the details of, you know. You like, know, and the trick is not fault not yourself not becoming one of those little small details in, in, in those years you feel me remember that dude remember that dude remember that dude house phone i used to like co-host on no jumper what yeah happened what happened to him yo okay on some real shit do you still got any of the fucking pack collab high top skate highs you gotta holla at little uno Whew. he might just do that it. nigga look like a linebacker now 
He cut the dreads <laughs> off. He all swole. Yeah, I'm not even trying to roast you. Nah, that's Uno. my son. Yo, yeah. Uno, Uno got swole on niggas. He looked like fucking what's that nigga He's name in from shape. the shape? What's that nigga name from the Seahawks, right? yeah. bro? Lynch. He looked like he looked like Marshawn Lynch now. Like that nigga <laughs> swole, bro. Yeah. Shout out to Uno because I feel like highlighting for the skate highs. Diamonds, got the skate they cleaning, for you. I'm icy, they cheesing. Hey. Yo, how'd you come up with that fucking <laughs> young L? Like, how'd Bro, you get that? Like, it's funny because I used to use Fruity Loops. I used like Fruity Loops demo for like mm. Fruity Loops 3.56 for like maybe like two months or something. And I just had like used the the um, the vocoder or whatever they mm. have in there. And it was I like just, an alien? Yeah, it's like a weird little voice. And I just took that tag and then I just stopped using the program and started using Reason. Facts, but you, you, but like that shit all tied into each other because you had like it was like a like an alien like robotic sound yeah. sounding thing and then you like you know you had the like young alien mixtape and like that's you know true. like you yeah. it it all fit into each other man you know what's that's funny true, yeah. is that too short what's he say on the on the Vans remix he says something right before your producer tag drops he like intros it yeah he's like I think he was I just recently listened to that shit it's funny you bring that yeah. up he was like who did the beat. <laughs> Mm. And it's uh, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, and he told me to like put like another tag on it. He was like, yeah, put another tag on it right there, brother. That's tight. Yeah, like, that was Who really did cool. this beat, Young L? Who did the beat, Young L? Like two tags. That's a pretty oh, dope okay. co-sign right there. I like that. Uh, Yo, anybody that's watching this, if you are a Lil B fan or if you fucked with the pack or any of that, if you never heard any of the SS mixtapes, go back and fucking listen to those, man. Those are fucking legendary, bro. That's your damn homework. You feel me? Yeah. Any uh, thanks before we wrap this up? Thanks to my moms. Thanks to my pops. RP Granny. Free OT. Free OT. I Free OT. Know. It's Berkeley. Squash. Shout out Scotty too, man. Scotty, Scotty. Scotty pimping in the building. Scotty too hot. Scotty, what's your Instagram? So I ain't got to go find it later. It's, uh, Scott from Berkeley. <laughs> That's good. Yo. Hell yeah. You just spelled out regular? Yeah. yeah. Damn, you you did that. You guys got to yeah. stop all those kids on the fucking campus from beating the hell out of each other out in Berkeley. That's why you guys are always in the news <laughs> the these days. Shit, the shit is crazy as fuck it's out there. Nah, it's like fi finally white people decided to fucking beat each other up in in the bay. That's cool. Yeah, it's like it's, it, I thought it was like it was like a joke when I because I seen people taking flight. I was like, damn, wow. that bitch got hit. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, like something like that. Shit is wild out there. For oh, that sure. one girl with the dreads got fucking is that, clocked is this by recently that one fool. Or this is like been going on. I don't know. I just see this show new, and I see this show on YouTube where it just be like brawls. They be yeah. brawling at the parks. Like let's set up and brawl like straight up. It's like, a honestly, whole thing. They're like Berkeley college students. I mean, the thing about it is with all the politics, so I'm like I have my views and whatnot but i'm not gonna like risk my safety or anybody else's safety for like some political views i right. can't wrap my head around the idea of going to a fucking protest like yeah, that's no, what yeah. i did yeah, with my right, saturday almost ran over by cars it's like legit like getting yeah. shot with beanbags by the police and shit that's out. that's all out bro yeah what the fuck can you imagine giving a fuck about anything that much because you know why because we too base for all that shit wait before we leave real talk real quick yeah, i'll blame real. it on baseness too. you guys all originated base together based, yeah ba little b just like Took it and like owned it and like I'm the bass guy. Okay. Sure. But they bass guy. they all created bass. But bass meant the same thing at the time? Bass, like it come what it comes from is bass rock, like bass rock, like mm. crack rock. Because people in my school, we was at Berkeley High, people used to say, like, Oh, you bass. Like they'd be like, Oh, you're hella bass. You're like you like look like dope. a knock or like a dauphine. Yeah. So they would be like, Oh, they'll be like calling the all, all the losers bass and shit. So we kinda were like, fuck it, we bass. You know what I mean? We based. You took your so, own work yeah, we version took that of it. Shit, yeah. and we flipped it. And then, like, we had other groups coming out with shit saying, like, they was based. You know, we was defending our title. You feel me? Mm -hmm. right. It was just funny. Like, so uh, at the end of the day, like, yeah, we created it pretty much. I remember first seeing the words base God and being like, this motherfucker's really bragging about being a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because, like, I never even made that connotation because. Uh, like they already had an album called Bass Boys, and like mm -hmm. you know, like it was yeah. like already a thing. So like, you were too. on them before you knew about being a bass head, which is what you are now. I'm kind of a J, you know. I got <laughs> oh, on, don't do on. it. We're ending the podcast. <laughs> wait, nah, nah, wait, Let's wait. censor this motherfucker. Uh, yeah, L, it's been dope as fuck having you on the podcast. Sure, really appreciate sure, it. Appreciate hey, it. everybody out there, much love. Check out No Jumper on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Check out Young L on iTunes. Hook him up with some motherfucking uh, streaming revenue. Check out my Instagram, all that shit. Yeah, 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 it's on the screen. Everybody's on the screen. Go check out Ping Dolphin too on motherfucking you Fairfax. You feel me? Still Fairfax, walk away. Hate Street. Gang. Locations. Peace. Yo, I know a nigga that used to work in Zoomies in the mall that I worked at. And that nigga, I don't know if he still do, but he did like graphic design for y'all niggas. He made... Um, that crew neck with all the sushi rolls and shit on it? I think I know who uh who that is, you know, F.
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My boy. Bro, that nigga used to work at a motherfucking gym. I know. I told him. I got this job to off and he was yeah, so like, so bro, bro. You ain't understand, man. Sure. Fucking a young me. Nigga, appreciate that shit. I'll be a rock. Real shit, man. If you don't fuck with me, you're a stupid dumb idiot. I'm ballin' like an elf. Oh.